Okay, the last chapter, chapter 57 of the haul truck, you saw the issue that I had with the brake caliper. Um, let's start this uh, chapter out uh, with me tearing it back apart and getting preparation for um, milling out the other side, getting the U-bolts cut, uh, put back together in preparation for seeing if I can rotate that caliper around to the other position. Um, I had talked about it in the last chapter, um, maybe the possibility of being able to rotate that caliper around on the axle, um, but we're gonna get the uh, axle back under it, the U-bolts cut, U-bolts clamped up on both sides in this chapter, um, among other things. Welcome to Chapter 58, Ford F750 haul truck build. I'm kind of standing here in the middle of the shop uh, showing you a picture of the lift. Um, one of the, I got a comment um, after I posted that last chapter, I got a comment um, not on that video, but on another haul truck video asking about the sleeper. Um, again, I think I've mentioned this in other chapters, but what my intention is to do is to get those axles, get that rear axle completed and get it underneath there, uh, get a couple of tires mounted up on the, uh, some rims um, so that I've got a rolling chassis. Then what I'm going to do is actually use this lift, this uh, truck lift or car lift, um, to set the um, sleeper in place so what I'll do is get a rolling chassis be able to roll the truck under it have the sleeper uh, up in the air and then kind of set it down using the lift onto the frame so that I can figure out my attachment points what I need to do on the rear of the sleeper there's a, a couple of things and what I'll do is I'll take you over to uh, the sleeper and show it to you. There's a couple of attachment points in the back, but let me take you over there and show that to you. Okay, we're over here behind the rear of the sleeper, and you can see from this angle, I've got two brackets, this bracket and this bracket on here. This bracket is for a shock that goes down to a cross member on the frame rails, between the frame rails, to support it. This bracket is actually for an airbag. Um, so there, the back of the sleeper is supported by an airbag and kind of stabilized by those shock absorbers, or those shock absorbers do probably serve two functions. One, one is to um, calm the effect of, of the airbag bouncing up and down as you hit bumps, but the other one is to probably kind of stabilize it um, from swaying side to side. As you can see, there's a bracket on both sides, similar brackets on both sides. So uh, I can get a cross support in between the frame rails and it's going to support both the airbag and the shock absorber. So again, intention is to get a rolling chassis uh, probably what I'll do is turn the truck, take it outside, uh, roll it back outside, take it outside, turn it around, and back it into the shop. That way what I can do is set the um, sleeper up on this, up on to the lift, and then just roll the chassis back underneath the sleeper. I can't do it the other way. I can't leave it facing forward because I don't think I can get the sleeper up high enough to clear the cab. So if I put the sleeper on there, took it up as high as I could, I don't think the cab would clear going underneath it. That's why I've got to turn it around and back it under it. But anyways, uh, there's that point. So let's get on with the video again. We're going to... Um, be taking it back apart. There's going to be a lot of tripod footage where um, I, I no vocal, no verbalization on it. Uh, I might do some voiceover here and there, but.
basically it's just work okay i'm back over here to the haul truck and this is like the day after i posted uh, part 57 of the haul, haul truck build so what i'm doing is starting to disassemble the driver's side u-bolts and stuff so um, because with those u-bolts cranked up like that it it draws the whole a uh, trailing arm suspension of the um air suspension uh down to the axle and thus pulling that trailing arm down on the passenger side so what i've got to do is get some free space in between the axle and the uh, trailing arms of the air suspension so that i can get that wedge that pin wedge assembly out of there and take it over to the mill and mill that one also um, there's a couple of other things that have to be done and I've got to take a good look at it. Um, w one of the things, that one, that is on there now. So uh, this trailing arm is setting into the shim, uh, shim wedge, let's call it. Um, and it's uh, aligned with the pins as you know I slotted that shim wedge so that it would um, align fore and aft with the pins but if you look at this side I, I've got a little bit of a gap there now if you kind of look down the plane of the frame with the trailing arm it almost looks like it's pulled out a little or pulled in a little bit the rear of the trailing arm is is coming in <clears throat> same way with this one so it actually looks like i might be able to adjust it with this this is the the cross member where the bags actually sit onto um, that is pinned onto the trailing arms and that's where the bags land the bags and the shocks <clears throat> actually if I took this I'm not sure how these holes are in here there's four holes that bolts that hold this on to the trailing arm portion of this in itself um, Maybe if I elongated those holes a little bit, it would give me enough slop to, or even I might even be able to loosen them enough to get enough slop to pull that down into it um, and, and rectify that problem. So, as you know, as if you watched part 57, there was the issue with the caliper and the torque bar the torque bar being <clears throat> the torque bar being that rod that is down below and the distance in here and I told you in part um, 57 that kind of my thought was if if I once I get this uh, rear end fastened in if I could take the caliper and rotate it over to the back, um, it would probably give me more than enough clearance on, on the thing. Um, but as some of the viewers had said, um, and uh, I had also kind of... Uh, ran this through in my mind not knowing exactly if it was factor or not that uh, the bleeder valve has to be at the top well uh, Brian Block brought up a good point and this is the point that I had thought about when somebody had mentioned having that bleeder valve at the top if you switch this one um, took them in and, and switch their places um, on the um, from driver's side to passenger side and vice versa 
shifting them into the back would put the bleeder valves at the top. Um, but let's get that resolved. Uh, let me, I don't even know if I can shift these to the back yet. So let's uh, resolve that issue. The, the other thing is I'm not sure how the inside of this caliper is constructed. <clears throat> we have this, um, the hydraulic line into it, the brake line into it. Does it just go into a kind of an open reservoir in here and, and together push against the pistons of the caliper so that we have an open reservoir in here. If that's the case, I could probably take and switch the bleeder valve and the hydraulic inlet uh, line, switch places with them because it's just an open chamber in there and it wouldn't matter. So if I, if I flip this one over to the back, I could just take this bleeder valve off, put it up here, take the hydraulic feed line off and put it down here and have the same arrangement. But I don't know whether it's chambered differently in there. Um, if there's a restricted port going to the bleeder valve. Um, so some things that, uh, some issues that have to be explored and, and thought out. I had mentioned in a previous video clip that I'm removing these so that I can uh, separate the axle um, from the trailing arms of the air suspension so that I can get that uh, shim wedge out of the other side so that I can take it over the mill and do what I have to do with it to uh, get that pin alignment to fit. Uh, just to kind of show you, this is the second bracket, that wedge bracket, uh, wedge shim, whatever you want to call it, that goes in between uh, the uh, air suspension uh, trailing arm and uh, the axle, uh, just milling it out for that pin to fit. And here it is after it was milled. This is uh, number two, the passenger side one. What I'm going to do is take these and put them in the uh, bead blaster, clean them up before I put them on. Okay, I'm over here at the back of the haul truck. Um, I just uh, started working on this again this morning. What I couldn't get... Um, the this is a bracket the cross bracket that goes a pa across the back of the trailing arm of the air suspension i could not get this bracket off there was nuts on the bottom of it i i took the nuts off actually the bolts broke off but i could not get the bracket back off again i tried chiseling it i tried everything um Finally, what I ended up doing is getting the cutting torch out. Uh, you see the cutting torch over there? And I cut the heads of the bolts off and popped it off with a chisel so that it came off. But I, I got to tell you, I'm not really sure. Uh, I haven't explored this yet. Did they actually tap this? 
and these bolts are tapped into it and that's why I couldn't get it out um, but it doesn't make sense why they put um, nuts on the bottom of it um, unless they were just being extra precautious about the whole thing but I'll uh, I just wanted to show you that I got that off what I'm gonna do is mount these two things up what I had an issue with is I think that this the way this bracket was configured there was a little bit of difference of, between the frame rail spacing on the truck that this came off of and this truck so when I put this mounted this all up and put it on here um, it, it appeared to be this appears to be a little bit wider than what this air suspension came off of so I might have to readjust those bolt holes uh, I'm not here goes the camera not even sure what I'm gonna do I I might make a new cross support bracket to begin with uh, but I'm not really sure yet so I'll bring you back and let you know what I'm gonna do is just fit this up try I'm gonna try and get those bolts out of there first and I'll let you know how they come out if they are tapped in there and how they come out um, and but I'll bring you back and kind of show you the fit up as I go Not all the way tight, but I want to uh, get the other side in first before I tighten everything up. I doesn't like this hardy steel.
Okay, I told you in a previous clip that I'd bring you back and explain why I didn't think that these studs are screwed into the trailing arm of the um, air suspension. The, those are the studs. They go down through this secondary plate too. These studs are approximately two inches long right there. Now I told you that they broke off. Most of them broke off. Some of them didn't broke off. Some of them I got the nuts off of. But let me tell you or show you this is one of the ones that broke off. So this measurement is about 5 eighths. That's about 2. And I had cut the heads off of them. So you've got uh, two and seven eighths or three inches approximately that the original bolts would have had to bend and here's what the opening of this these channels and that's exactly what it is these are two channels uh, back to back or lapped over each other uh, that's how they made this this uh, support for the airbags um, but here is the opening. The opening is two and a quarter. So I, I'm saying that they couldn't have been bolts because the bolts would have never fit in here to be able to go down through to begin with. So uh, I just wanted to point that out to you. Okay, here we are back behind the truck again after I just shot that clip um, r regarding those bolt lengths and why I didn't think it was... Uh, uh, threaded into the trailing arm of the air suspension. So here it is. Both sides are bolted up and if I didn't explain it well enough, the reason why I took that that tube off or that cross, uh, cross support member off between the two trailing arms is because I was having an issue getting each side lined up dependently, independently uh, or together with this this bar on there and me thinking that this bar was a different width from the original truck that this air suspension came off of versus this frame so that's why I cut that bar off so that I could support them two uh, individually onto the axle and then measure the whole distance between there that to see if it is the same as was on there uh, but I again had issues getting it on there so um, w this whole thing started out about the brake calipers we're not going to be able to get to that today I've got them on I've got the suspension on here and let me just um, tell you explain to you one thing the entire axle is being supported or being positioned by this torque arm. That torque arm is a major support right now. These leaves are not supported. They're just kind of, well, I can't really move it because it's got weight on it, but that leaf is just resting on top of a nylon or a Teflon pad, it could be. Um, but so the positioning of it is, in, is supported exactly or positioned exactly because of that torque arm. Now I told you how I measured off the front axle to position the brackets for the suspension on there and I did that. But now that I've got the axle positioned or up in place and clamped down, what I want to do is pull a measurement back off of that front axle back to this rear axle and make sure that it is sitting parallel to the front axle. Um, so before I start messing with the brake calipers to see if I can rotate them things around, I'm going to um, do that. And again, that will be in the next video. I will show you uh, what the measurement comes out to be from the front uh, axle back to the rear axle and make sure that it is parallel the two of them are parallel with each other so that I don't get that uh, uh, offset running down the road issue
Um, but anyway, so that and the brake caliper will be in chapter uh, 59. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button. Subscribe.